Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in our report, we're in Spain to witness the devastating effects of marine heat waves on life below the waves. Right now, we are seeing marine ecosystems being degraded at rates that I would never have imagined. But first, let's look at the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Here in Europe, the month of August was warmer than average, with temperatures 1.1 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. If we have a look at this map of surface air temperature anomaly, we can see the big trends for the month. It was much warmer than average in northwestern Siberia, cooler in western Russia, and then warmer over much of Europe. In fact, on one day in the Brussels suburb of Uckel, they reached 35.9 degrees, and that's a record for August there. Then in the western United States, it's been much warmer and drier than average, and we may have a new world record for the month of August with a temperature of 54.4 degrees Celsius. Now, I wanted to show you this graphic to introduce the concept of marine heat waves, which are days when the water temperature is two, three, or even four degrees warmer than expected. Now, this shows the number of marine heat wave days across the Mediterranean in August. And we can see that around Italy, Libya, Around here in Morocco, Spain and Algeria, it's particularly affected. Now those marine heat waves are generated by warmer weather, just as they are on land. And with climate change, they're becoming more frequent, more intense and they're lasting longer. So they can have a devastating effect on marine ecosystems, especially things like corals, which are havens of biodiversity. I set off for the Spanish region of Catalonia to find out more. Guiding us today is marine biologist Joaquim Garabu as he goes on one of his regular diving sessions around the Medes Islands near the resort of Lestartit. These islands have been a marine protected area since 1983, making them an ideal spot to observe the effects of marine heat waves. The plan is to dive 15 metres below the surface to observe a population of gorgonians, a kind of soft coral that's dying out because of higher temperatures. What we're going to do basically is count how many colonies are unaffected and how many colonies are affected by mortality. Now, normally in populations that are well conserved, you'd have around 5 to 10 percent of colonies affected by mortality. And in this population in recent years, we've seen rates of affected colonies at more than 80 percent. Once below the waves, Joaquim begins his survey, spotting dead gorgonians in areas which a decade ago were full of life. The average temperature in the Mediterranean is rising around 0.4 degrees per decade, but the pressing problem is heat waves. The water at this depth should be between 19 and 22 degrees, but today it's at 23 degrees. The corals just aren't adapted to survive. We know that the threshold for many of these species is around 24, 25 degrees. Periods of exposure to temperatures above these limits cause physiological stress, greater virulence of possible pathogens, and this is what ends up causing the mortalities that we've observed. Marine heat waves are harming ecosystems around the Mediterranean and beyond, with kelp forests and coral reefs from Australia to California also suffering. The outlook is grim. Even if the tide is turned on global warming, these colonies could take over a century to recover. These species are long-lived species, that is, they can live for tens, hundreds of years, and therefore the loss of these long-lived colonies will take as many or more years to recover in the future. You can read more about marine heat waves and see all of the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.